today we are going to talk about newborn screening and answer any questions that expecting mothers may have. We will talk about the types of screens, how they are performed, why they're important, and what to do with the results. Of the many divisions of the State Department of Health, newborn screening is housed in the Maternal and Child Health Division with our partners in early hearing detection and intervention. The goal of our newborn screening program is early detection, intervention, and treatment. The earlier we can detect conditions, the earlier we can get your baby the correct treatment so that they can live long and healthy lives. As an expecting mother, I want to know what will happen to my baby after it is born. So what exactly is newborn screening? Newborn screening is a set of three different screens that all newborns in Indiana receive between 24 to 48 hours after birth. The first screen is the pulse oximetry screening, which checks your baby's heart and makes sure that it has developed correctly. The second screen is the heel stick screening, and this detects genetic conditions. The third screen is a hearing screen, which checks to make sure that your baby can hear. You have mentioned the word screening a lot. Is screening the same thing as testing? No, screenings are not the same as testing. These three newborn screenings help us find babies who may be at risk of a disease. If any screenings come back abnormal, then testing may be done. Essentially, screenings help us identify conditions in babies, and testing confirms whether or not the baby has the condition. Okay, thank you. Now I know what newborn screening is, but why do you perform the screens? Newborn screening is important because a baby may look healthy, but they could be at a serious risk of a condition that cannot be seen. Some of these conditions are severe and could lead to developmental disorders. Fortunately, many of these conditions are treatable, but the only way they can be treated is if we detect the conditions early. Newborn screening allows us to detect conditions before they become serious. How many babies does newborn screening help each year? We detect between 400 and 500 babies each year that have a condition, so newborn screening is incredibly important. Majority of these newborns are happy and healthy today because our screenings detected their condition early. Because of this, these newborns were identified in a timely manner and potentially avoided disability and disease associated with some of the conditions. Additionally, over a thousand more babies are found to be carriers of genetic conditions each year. Most of these babies are found to be carriers of sickle cell disease or cystic fibrosis. Being a carrier doesn't have any negative health effects on the baby itself, but it can cause health issues for future generations. Can you tell me more about the process of newborn screening? Definitely. As I mentioned before, newborn screening is a set of three screens. I will tell you a little bit more about each. The first important screening we will cover is the pulse oximetry screening. This is a very quick, painless, and non-invasive procedure. I'm so glad it won't cause any pain to my baby. How is this screening performed? To perform this screening, a clip will be attached to the baby's right hand and one foot. These clips help measure the amount of oxygen in the baby's blood and tell us if the baby's heart has developed correctly. This screening will test for seven different types of critical congenital heart disease. The next screening is the heel stick screening. This screening is incredibly important because it screens for over 50 types of genetic conditions. Some of these conditions can cause major developmental delays and others can severely impact your baby's well-being and quality of life. Wow, I'm glad this screen looks for so many kinds of genetic conditions. How is this one performed? This is a very quick procedure and your baby will be pricked on the heel to draw a little bit of blood. The blood is then collected on a card that will be sent to a lab to be screened for the results. The last screening is the hearing screen, and this is also a quick, painless, and non-invasive screen. There are actually two different ways to perform this screening. One is the autoacoustic emission screening, OAE, and the other is the automated auditory brainstem response, AABR. The OAE measures the echo in your baby's inner ear, while the AABR measures your baby's brain response to sound. Should I be worried about which type of screen my baby receives? Is one better than the other? Both of the screenings test your baby's hearing, and the screening your baby receives typically depends on the hospital. One is not better than the other, and they both check for hearing loss. Now I know more about the screens, but what happens once they have been performed on my baby? The next steps depend on your baby's results. If your baby passes the screenings, congrats. There isn't much else to do if your baby passes. For the pulse oximetry screen, the nurse should note on your keepsake paper that your baby has passed the screen. 
Now remember you saying that the pulse oximetry screen tests only seven kinds of CCHD. Should I still be concerned if my baby passes the screen? Yes, make sure you know the signs and symptoms of CCHD. Your baby could have one of the five types that isn't screened for with the pulse oximetry. For the results of the hearing screen, the nurse should note on your keepsake paper that your baby has passed the screening. For the heel stick screening, it may take a little bit of time to get the results back because it has to go through testing. Your pediatrician should access those results for you, so make sure that you ask about the heel stick results at your next visit. What happens if my baby does not pass the screens? If your baby doesn't pass, the next steps are a bit different for each screening. If your baby fails the pulse oximetry screening, the doctor will perform an echocardiogram to look at your baby's heart in more detail. If your baby fails the hearing screen, it could mean that your baby has hearing loss, and this can be considered a developmental emergency. The hospital will refer you to a special audiologist. It is incredibly important to follow up with the audiologist within three months of the failed screening to get proper treatment for your baby. Lastly, if your baby's heel stick screening results are abnormal, your baby may need to have more testing done to confirm a diagnosis. Your pediatrician will be able to access these results too, so make sure to ask about it at your next visit. Thank you. I feel very prepared now. Where can I go if I need additional support or guidance about these screenings? We have multiple resources for new and expecting mothers. We have provided the contact information for both the Genomics and Newborn Screening Program and the Early Hearing Detection and Intervention Program. Remember that the Genomics and Newborn Screening Program is only responsible for two of the three screenings, the pulse oximetry and the heel stick. If you have any questions about the hearing screens, you must contact the Early Hearing Detection and Intervention Program. Is there anywhere else I can access information about newborn screening besides calling the programs? Yes, each program has its own web page. We have included the links here to the Genomic and Newborn Screening website and the Early Hearing Detection and Intervention website. We also have a brief five-minute survey that can be accessed at the link provided on this slide or by using the QR code. We would love to hear your feedback about this presentation, so we would greatly appreciate it if you could take a moment to fill out our survey. Thank you for joining us to talk about newborn screening. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out using the contact information that we provided.